This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue unlearning the world with book 2. In chapter 4, this is section 3, The Self-Construct, part 1. Friend, there was a time when I was feeling such desperation that there came a willingness to open up to something else. It seems that is often the case with people. As long as things seem to be going along smoothly, then the desire to question and to look at what is going on is not there. There is no motivation for it. But when things have obviously gone amok, there is greater readiness and willingness to la- take a look and see what is possible. David When things have gone amok in my perception, I have a perceptual problem. It really is not sane to project the problems, chaos and conflict of the world onto God as if God knows about it, but chooses not to do anything. Any attempt to make a connection between God and the fragmented, run amok world is an attempt to evade the responsibility I have for my own state of mind. Peace is a choice that I can make. When I choose to perceive myself as a victim, or as part of a world run amok, there is a distortion in my perception that needs correction. Friend, the world never has run amok. My mind has run amok. Let's talk about the concept of victimization, all the different forms that that takes and how the concept really is not possible except in a deceived or sleeping mind. David To even have a sense of victim or victimizer, you have to have two. You have to have a subject and an object to have a victim and a victimizer. Conveniently for the mind that has two thought systems, the split can be projected out onto the world when the experience of it feels intolerable, reinforcing the idea that the split is in the world. It appears on the smoke screen, so to speak, and not in the mind where the construct should be seen as a construct illuminating that there really is no problem. Early experiences of helplessness or victimization by parents are just part of a construct set up so that the self-concept can perceive itself as victimized by other bigger people. Friend I guess dependency is another form of victimization. I set it up, for instance, so that physically I was dependent on my parents to provide food and clothing and shelter, as well as emotional needs. David The scarcity and the lack of faith are projected out onto the world, so that the world seems to be a place of scarcity. Now, I am a subject, a person, in an objective world outside of me. This is a world of kill or be killed, where you have to fight to keep your head above water. The meaning that can be read into it is, I am a dependent little child that will die unless I get food and shelter from mom and dad. Friend, I am helpless 
of myself. I have to count on the adults in my world to take care of me. David, that is a construct. We are back to it being a construct. You might have other children as part of that construct, an older sister or a younger brother. There is competition and I seem to be victimized. Sometimes I seem to be victimized and at other times I seem to be playing the victimizer role, the teaser and the tormentor. Then you go to school and there are teachers. The teachers have roles. Now I have to sit in a particular seat and do things when I am told. This can be perceived as a battle for control. The construct of victim and victimizer can take many different forms. The person may seem to be an adult or a child which are both constructs. Friend, the mind always wants to see inequality. So whenever there is inequality, somebody is always going to be the dependent one, the victim. David, the deceived mind always needs the split in the world to be a distraction from the split in the mind. It does not want to see that it is just a decision. You have military and IRS and police departments and officers. We could bring it all back to the authority problem. There are authority issues all the way through all of these. Basically, there is an authority issue with God in the sense that the true self, the true spirit, is one, whole and complete. It is abstract. To believe that I am a person in a world is to deny my reality and instead make up something that is not real. The belief that I could have separated from God is so painful that these concepts are made up to cover over that pain, to be a substitute. Friend, the idea of victimization really depends on the belief in separation and the whole authority problem worked in through all that is the desire to be in control. David The belief that one can be unfairly treated by another person, by the world or by the society is part of the setup of the world to see the split outside the mind and emphasize the difference between the subject and the object. It is literally just a choice in the mind. Friend, so let's bring this into what feels like a practical realm. Please address the issue of being abused as a child by a parent. David, okay we see that this can be perceived as a problem. There can be a lot of pain or upset associated with it. The pain is coming from the sense of being victimized. Friend, so that particular interpretation of being victimized is where the pain stems from? David, yes, that is a construct. Before you can have a belief that you were victimized by a parent comes the subject-object split. You have to believe that you are a person, a body in the world. You have to believe the circumstance took place and there was no choice or decision involved in it. 
It happened to you as a person. Friend. And that something outside my mind could bring me hurt or distress or upset of any kind. David. If I believe I am a body and set up certain psychological and physical boundaries, I can say that I have certain inalienable rights as a person and that there are other persons out there who can violate those rights. I have set up the whole construct. I believe there are things that are violations of my personhood, things that are against my will. We will conclude this section in tomorrow's reading.